Hi everyone, it's great to see you again. I hope you're ready to learn. If you haven't already, go ahead and grab your Bible because we're gonna need it today. And let's start with our prayer. If you'll bow your head and close your eyes, we'll pray together. Dear Lord, we thank you. We love you so much and we praise you. Uh, thank you that we have this time to come together and to learn about you, Lord, and just to keep growing closer to you. I pray you would be with us and keep our hearts and our minds focused on you. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so we've been looking at families and God's design for families. And we met Paul and we saw how Paul wrote about families in the Bible and what our responsibilities are in our own families. And then we saw the story of baby Moses and how his family took care of him. And then today we are going to see the story of Ruth and Boaz. So if you'll grab your Bible, we're gonna do our Bible drill. We're gonna be in the book of Ruth and we're gonna be in chapter one. Ready? Go find it. And Ruth is in the Old Testament and it actually comes after the book of Judges. And we're going to be in chapter one. The whole book of Ruth is, of course, about the story um, of Ruth. But we're just going to pick out a few verses to read. I hope you'll go back later and read um, all of the books so you can see our whole story. We're going to start in verse 16. So read with me. But Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God, where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts you and me. When she saw that she was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her. Now the two of them went until they came to Bethlehem, and it happened when they had come to Bethlehem that all the city was excited because of them, and the women said, Is this Naomi? Okay, let's watch our video, and then we'll come talk about the story of Ruth. Naomi had a hard life. She and her husband and their two sons moved to Moab because there was a famine in Bethlehem where they lived. Soon, some terrible things happened. Naomi's husband died, and she was left alone with her sons. The sons married women from Moab, but later her sons died. Naomi decided to go back to Bethlehem to live near her relatives. Ruth, one of Naomi's daughters-in-law, decided to go with her. Naomi wanted Ruth to stay in Moab with her family, but Ruth would not leave Naomi's side. Ruth declared, where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. That's some dedication right there. Naomi and Ruth returned to Bethlehem at harvest time. The women had no way to earn money for food, so Ruth received permission to gather grain that was left in the fields by the workers. Boaz, a relative of Naomi, saw Ruth working in his field. You might say she was outstanding in the field. He was kind to Ruth and told his workers to leave extra grain behind for Ruth to gather. He told Ruth to work only in his field where she would be safe and to drink the water provided for his workers. Boaz said to Ruth, I have heard what you have done for your mother-in-law. May God reward you. Naomi was proud of Ruth. Ruth was kind to Naomi and took care of her. Naomi's friends told Naomi, Ruth is better to you than seven sons. In time, Ruth and Boaz were married, and they had a son named Obed. Naomi loved the child and helped care for him. Obed grew up and was the father of Jesse and the grandfather of King David. Obed was also an ancestor of Jesus. So what are some things that we can learn from this story? Well, we've been talking about God's design for families and how we're supposed to care for one another. And uh, I saw quite a few examples of that in this story, didn't you? Yeah, well, we see Naomi lost her husband and she lost her sons, but her daughter-in-law, Ruth, stayed by her side, didn't she? Yeah, Ruth also lost her husband, but she stayed with Naomi and she actually went to Bethlehem with her. She was very loyal. And then Naomi and Ruth in Bethlehem met Boaz. 
And Boaz was actually a relative of Naomi's. And he took great care of Naomi and Ruth. He made sure they had food, grain, and that they were taken care of. So we can see each of them taking care of one another. Later on, Ruth and Boaz were married and they had a baby and Naomi helped them take care of the baby. So we can see they all cared for one another, just like we're supposed to in our families. God has a great design for families. We're never going to be perfect on this earth, but he wants us to do our best to care for one another. We each have a responsibility to care for and love and respect each other. And so we can see that through the example of Ruth and Boaz and Naomi. So let's play a little game of would you rather. Let's think about some chores, okay? And you think about which one you would rather do. Would you rather dust or vacuum? I guess if I had to, I would rather vacuum. Would you rather um, give the dogs a bath or clean up after supper? Um, I think give the dogs a bath. That sounds more fun. Yeah. Uh, would you rather clean out the garage or sweep the sidewalk? Mm, I think sweep the sidewalk. That sounds easier. <laughs> yeah. So I want you to think about all the chores and things that need to be done in your home and whether you want to do it or not, I want you to pick a chore and I want you to make sure that you do it this week as many times as you need to, okay? And I hope you've been doing your challenges so far where you've been serving and caring for others in your family. This goes right along with that. So this might be something you could do to help your mom and dad by, whether it's cleaning out the garage or dusting or vacuuming, whatever you can do. I want you to pick that chore. And even if you don't want to, I want you to try really hard to do it this week, okay? So that's your challenge. And then let's look at our memory verse. Our memory verse today is going to be in Romans, and we're going to be in chapter 12. Romans is uh, in the New Testament. So our story was in the Old Testament, but our memory verse is in the New Testament. And we're going to be in Romans chapter 12, and we're going to be in verse 10. Okay, so you guys read this along with me. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another. Okay, so work on that this week, and I hope you can get it memorized. That's all for today. You have a Mooseberry video to enjoy coming up. I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you next time. Bye. The entire school is busy planning a special thank you parents program. Everyone is working together really well. The program will be for all the parents, but we're also each planning a special part for our own parents. Mom and Dad are going to love my tribute to them the best. Ahem. <clears throat> no offense to Linus, but my pot will utterly destroy his pot. Mother and Father will have no choice but to love mine the most. <laughs> no way. They'll love mine the most. They will love mine the most, you buffoon. And that's final. Well, maybe not everyone is working well together. These are the chronicles of the Mooseberry Masterclass and the exceptional and very, very, very gifted students who attend, and also Alex. I'll be singing an original song. Words, music, the whole thing. All about how much Mum and Dad mean to me. I've even prepared a slideshow. That's all? I've been working on the same thing, only twice as good. The song is twice as loving, and the slideshow will be twice as long. I didn't finish. For sure, Mom and Dad will love me more after they see this amazing portrait I've painted of just the three of us. Wait till you hear my new poem, just me, Mom, and Dad. <coughs> No one else, just me, mom, and dad. No one else to make them mad. No one else who looks a bit like me. No one else, just me, they see. The love between mom and dad and myself will crush Linus. I'm way more lovable than Tannis. I've never had an evil plan in my life. He's had like six. Ugh, they're boring me with their arguments. 
Yeah, those twins need to learn how to be team players. Kablamo! Putting up with their fussing is scarier than bungee jumping into the Grand Canyon without a rope, which I've done. Their parts of the program sounds like they're going to be amazing. But imagine how much better it would be if they were following the Bible. I'm following the Bible. It says, on your mother and your father. The Bible does talk about honoring your parents, but it also talks about how family members help and love each other. Tannis and Lannis have a special opportunity that the rest of us don't. They get to work together with their own family member to make something special for their parents. I think if they work together instead of trying to make each other look bad, they'd be able to make something really, really special for their parents. Well, I definitely want my parents to feel special. I suppose we could have a truce, at least until the program. I'm going to help Lannis more than he could ever help me. Oh yeah? Tannis wishes he could help that much. He won't be able to, because I'm going to help Tannis so much more than he can imagine. <sighs> well, at least they're arguing about something better.